Hello, guten Tag and welcome to another lighting tutorial. In today's tutorial I'm going to show you four different ways how to light faces. And I use these techniques all the time and I will show you how to do it as well as talk a little bit about when I use the specific techniques and when I use the others. As our model for today we have the beautiful Carla and her job is to just stare into the abyss for the entirety of this video. Before we start the tutorial, let's talk a little bit about the lights that we're using. We're using two light sources to illuminate our character's face. There are more light sources here, like the light coming out in from the outside, as well as a practical lamp. We also used another light to make our background not to look as boring, but we will focus on the lights that we use for our subject. As our key light, we're using the Feelworld FL225B. And this is a fairly strong but still inexpensive COB light with a Bowens mount and it's also by color. And I will talk a little bit about why this is important for a lot of different reasons, especially for today's shoot. And we're using a parabolic softbox. This is a 90 centimeter softbox with it. And I have a full video about my opinion on softboxes on bigger sets. But for a solo filmmaking environment, which it is right now this is actually perfect because we can move it around easily and we don't need several light stands and it produces a really nice and soft light it's a little cumbersome to work with in small spaces and you'll probably see this later in this video but this is what we have and this is the easiest way to get really nice and soft lighting when you're by yourself as our second light and this is being used as a hair light or rim light we're going to use another field world fl225b with a rectangular shaped softbox as well as a grid and i will talk a little bit about when we actually use this light why there's a grid on it and why this softbox comes in really handy for this kind of light before we start using our own lights we need to deal with the available light in the room and this is the light coming in from the outside as well as the practical in the background so the first thing we need to do is we need to expose for the background. And as you can see here, it is way too bright right now. So we need to darken it up. Right around here looks pretty good to me. So we don't have our background blown out too much. And it's also not underexposed in the shadow areas. What is underexposed is her skin, obviously. So this is where our key light comes in. So let's start up our key light. Striking. And there we go. Now we have her nicely lit. Let's just do, we're 26% right now. Let's go down to 20%, 22%. This looks pretty decent. And this already looks pretty good. Our camera is currently set to 5600 Kelvin because the entire environment is around 5600 Kelvin because there is light coming in from the outside, which should be around daylight. So we're setting our field world light to 5600 Kelvin as well to match the entire scene. The first lighting scene I'm going to show you is called Rembrandt lighting. And I use Rembrandt lighting all the time and it's gotten its name from a famous painter called Rembrandt. And he used this lighting technique in most of his paintings. And the way you can identify Rembrandt lighting is by this little triangle of light that is going to form on our character's dark side of the face. Speaking of dark side of our face, we want to have our light motivated and this is not only true for this one but it's true for all of our lighting scenes. We're going to place our key light on our camera left because this is where our windows are and we can see a big window in the background of our scene so it's just more natural that our key light is also coming from camera left and not from camera right. And in order to increase a bit of our contrast and create a bit of a silhouette and therefore enhancing the depth in our image we're going to place our camera on the opposite side of our key light source. And this is what's called shooting shadow side. And I try to do this most of the times because it just gives our scene more contrast, more depth, and it just looks more pleasing. In order to achieve our Rembrandt lighting, we need to move our key light source to around a 45 degree angle, maybe even a little bit more on our camera left towards our subject. So the way that I like to do it is I move my key light in and we can see it in frame right here. And then I just move it out as much as possible until it's just out of frame right here. And now we have a lot of contrast on our shadow side of her face, maybe even a bit too much. So we can just move this a bit further. 
But here you can see that the shadow that we created on her nose is also connecting with the shadow on her cheekbone and thus creating this little triangle of light on the dark side of her face. And we use Rembrandt lighting more for serious kind of scenes as well as when we want to add a little bit of drama, contrast and also mostly used for male characters. To enhance this contrast even more we're going to use a flag, thus taking away light from the shadow side of her face that is being bounced off this white wall in the background and enhancing our contrast even more. I'm going to place this flag right in here. Like so. And by adding this flag, we're going to take away light and increasing our contrast even more. But now we want to separate her a little bit more from the background. And for this, we're going to add in our rim light. And striking. There we go. Let me look at my monitor so I see what I'm doing. So as you can see, now we have a rim light and we just gave her a nice silhouette and therefore separating her a bit more from the background. But our light source is also set to 5600 Kelvin, which doesn't really make a lot of sense because we want to have it motivated by the practical lamp in the background, which is really, really warm. And thanks to the field world being by color, we can just change this and we can go all the way down to 2700 Kelvin. Let us do this right now. We're at 6700 Kelvin right now, which is really cool. And now we're going all the way down to 2700 Kelvin. And that makes a lot more sense and it looks a lot more realistic, like our rim light is coming from the practical that is standing behind her. Right now, I think it's just a bit too overpowering because I only wanted to subtly hint at the light that is coming from behind. So we're going to tone down the power. We're at 70% right now. Let's turn it off all the way. This was the before. And now let's add in a bit of that rim light. And just a little bit is just enough. And we also don't want to have this built onto her cheek as well as fill in the dark side of her face. So this is number one, why we have this grid. And this kind of limits our spill and therefore just concentrates it onto a certain area. And this is also where the softbox comes in handy because it is rectangular shaped and therefore easier to control our light. And we're also going to just move this even a bit more at an angle. So we are hitting her shoulder and not her face as much, just like this. So we're using three light sources here. A, our key light, B, we're using our negative fill or our flag to just take away light. And then we also use our rim light to just add in a bit more silhouette and separating her from the background. And if you're interested more in this topic, I made a full video about three-point lighting just a month ago. Now let's start creating our second scene. And this one is very similar to Rembrandt lighting. It's called loop lighting. And the way we create this is just by moving our key light a tad bit towards the front of our subject and just filling in a bit more light and just brightening up the image a little bit. The main difference here is that the shadow that we created on her nose is not connected to the shadow on her cheekbones anymore. And therefore we lose the triangle that is famous for the Rembrandt style, but we add in a loop shadow on the left side of her nose. This is being used in basically the same situation that we would use the Rembrandt lighting in, but not as dramatic and not as intense. Now we're going to move on to our third lighting scene. And this one is called beauty lighting, also known as butterfly or paramount lighting. The way we achieve our beauty lighting is by taking our key light source, moving it way more towards the front of our subject, then raising our light source all the way up high and then angling it down in a 45 degree angle towards our subject. And again, I don't really have a lot of ceiling space right here, so this is not ideal. So we're trying to get as much height as possible and then move in our light source as close to our subject without it actually being in the frame, like here. I would like to go a little closer, but I would have to raise it higher. An easier way is to also boom it with a boom pole, but again, I don't really have the space right here. So it's not ideal, 
but it still works. We're using this technique mostly on female faces because it just lights our face evenly, therefore just kind of hiding some blemishes and imperfections and also creating a bit of a shadow underneath her cheekbones, thus elevating those and just creating a more pleasing image. It's also called butterfly lighting because we're creating a butterfly shaped shadow underneath her nose. When using this technique, we need to be really careful of our light placement. If we raise our light too high above our subject, we're creating this sh shadow underneath her eyes and making her look like a raccoon, which will definitely not look pleasing at all. Another thing we really need to look out for when placing our light is that we don't place it too high and thus get rid of the catch light in her eyes, because it's really important to have the catch light and not make her look pretty dead. Now moving on to our fourth and final light setup, and this one is called commercial or flat lighting. And we use this when shooting happy commercials, when everything should be cheerful and light, and we're trying to eliminate most of our shadows in our image. And the way we achieve this is by taking our key light and we're going to bring this down again and we're going to be illuminating her way up front. So we're trying to come in really frontal but obviously we don't want to have our softbox in the frame so we just move our softbox out of frame but still have it really frontal lit. And now we're doing the opposite on our shadow side and we're getting rid of our flag and we're adding in some bounce. Just like so, we're getting rid of the flag and then replace our flag with a white bounce card. And with this bounce card, we're just filling in a lot of the shadow side, but I need a clamp for this. And we're going to use this duck clamp, also known as Clatterpus clamp, Quaker clamp, stupid clamp, whatever you want to call it. So, tightening this down, then we take our bounce board and open this up, get this in here, and I'm going to close this down. And as we can see, now we were filling in a lot of the shadow side and therefore having her face really evenly lit from both sides and this just creates a more happy environment and we don't have any shadows we don't have any contrasts so for a commercial or a happy testimonial for a brand we would use commercial or flat lighting if you wanted to we could actually use a separate fill light with another softbox and come from the opposite side but here i think in a small space when we're only lighting the face we get away with just a bounce card bouncing off our key light source of the bounce card onto the shadow side of her face and therefore acting as a fill light and that's a wrap that was our tutorial on how to light faces four different ways and it was rather simple and it was also not that much equipment that was needed for it so i will link everything down in the description below so you can check out the free to work lights as well as our reflector that we needed for this lighting tutorial and if you're interested in a full behind the scenes of a commercial that i shot this week that will go up on my channel next sunday so make sure to subscribe and activate the notification bell and if you like this video then please give it a thumbs up and I hope to see you on the next one. <laughs> I saw it. All right, so. cut. <laughs> <laughs>